Hey everyone. I'm not trying to politicize on what happened at Sandy Hook Elementary School because it is a tragedy, regardless. Uh, <clears throat> but I've come across something tonight that I was actually thinking about earlier today that would be beneficial to not only the taxpayers but also to help protect our children. And what it is is it's a it's a picture essentially I found on Facebook. It shows a soldier standing there with his M4. It says, stop school shootings. Place three or four armed veterans in every school. There are thousands of well-trained, unemployed veterans who would love the job of protecting children. You know, that's actually a damn good idea. As I said, I was thinking about this earlier today before I ever saw this while I was at work. On my way home, I don't know why, but I was listening to Alex Jones, and he had Jesse Ventura on there, and they were, they were talking about the Sandy Hook Elementary shooting. And Jesse Ventura said the same thing. Employ, employ these veterans you know, and, and retired law enforcement officers as basically like janitors, but have them carrying concealed. You know, Obviously, to, so the kids don't know that they have them on them. But you have these guys out there as, as bus monitors and janitors sweeping the hallways. These, these guys who keep their eyes on everything. You know, and it would prevent this. Because unfortunately, as displayed by the incident in China, a madman went into the school and slashed up 20 some odd kids and stabbed them with a knife. It doesn't matter what type of weapon it is. They're, these people are going to get through no matter what. You know, it, nothing will stop them. Unfortunately, the only thing that's going to stop a bad guy with a weapon is a good guy with a weapon. I don't care how many metal detectors you have. I don't care, you know, whether you've got locking doors and cameras. These people are bound and determined to get in one way or another. It doesn't matter. You know, you just can't stop them. I'm going to try and include part of a uh, <clears throat> video I found from Huffington Post on here, uh, which has several um, politicians on there, obviously spouting off their mind. But the first thing I want to do before I go any further and get to editing this video is I want to read an article uh, that was written by Larry Pratt, who is, see if I can find it here, he is the Executive Director of Gun Owners of America. Uh, mind you, this is on USA Today's website. <clears throat> it says, Opposing View, Eliminate Gun-Free gun -free Zone Regulations. In all actuality, that's true. Get rid of them. Because when you create a gun-free zone, you're essentially creating a defense-free zone. And you're making a criminal safe zone. Um... Anyhow, I'm going, to, I'm going to quote this article here. Uh, I'll post it up on my Facebook and uh, let you guys read it on yourself. <clears throat> In bold letters it says underneath that, the ban on semi-automatic rifles didn't work then and won't work now. A gunman, whose name we do not need to memorialize, took advantage of our gun control laws to slaughter 20 children and 6 adults in a Newton, Connecticut elementary school. In addition to the gunmen, blood is on the hands of members of Congress and the Connecticut legislators who voted to ban guns from all schools in Connecticut and most other states. They are the ones who made it illegal to defend oneself with a gun in a school when that is the only effective way of resisting a gunman. True. What a lethal, false security are the gun-free zone laws. Virtually all mass murders in the past 20 years have occurred in gun-free zones. Fact. The two people murdered several days earlier in a shopping center in Oregon were also killed in a gun-free zone. Hopefully, the Connecticut tragedy will be the tipping point after which a rising chorus of Americans will demand elimination of the gun-free zone laws that are in fact criminal safe zones. One measure of insanity is repeating the same measure, or I'm sorry, the same failure time after time, hoping that the next time the failure will turn out to be a success. Gun-free zones are a lethal insanity. And what's the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different outcome each time. It continues to go on and say, Israel finally came to grips with this in the early 1970s and have decisively stopped these attacks after a busload of children was massacred by Muslim terrorists. When I was there in the late 1990s, if you saw a busload of students, you saw at least 
one young teacher with a machine gun protecting the groups of students. Got to give it to the Israelis. They don't piss around. The Israelis have... Uh, I'm sorry, the, the Israelis have decisively stopped these school-related attacks and proved they want to live. Do we? Goes on to say, During the decade of the Clinton ban on semi-automatic rifles, the so-called assault weapons, and high-capacity high magazines, crime did not go down. Reinstating it would be simply another example of repeating the same failed policy and being surprised with the same failed result. We must tell our elected officials that they are acting as the criminals friends as long as they continue to support legislation that protects only criminals not decent people. Oh, and we must also insist that these criminal friendly elected officials not even try to blame gun owners or our gun culture for what a madman, I'm sorry, for what a criminal did. Had a few of, few of us been available with guns at the Newton School, most of the victims might still be alive. That's true. And you know, this comes, to my, this comes back to my point. You have a gun-free zone. You have stores and shopping malls that say, no guns allowed on premises. Well, that's good and fine. Why don't the family members of these victims that have been shot in gun-free zones, why are they not rising together in, say, mass lawsuits against the legislators, against the property owners? You know, they say malls and places like that are, are actually private property, so yes, within their rights, they can't say no guns on these premises. But if that's the case, then they should have to provide you with some form of protection. And if they don't, I'm sorry, but in my point of view, they're guilty of negligence. At the least, at the bare least, bare minimum, guilty of negligence. Massive lawsuits. We have to, we have to protect our own. You, you just, you, you can't expect the police to be there all the time. Now, shopping centers, shopping malls, they have, they have security guards. Okay, good and fine. Arm your security guards. might be a good idea. That shooter at the mall in Oregon, he may have only gotten off one shot by the time a uh, uh, security guard who's carrying would have popped his ass. You can't legislate and regulate against people who have done no wrong. I'm sorry. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw in a clip of these moron politicians uh, spouting their typical bullshit. And you're going to find that the first one always, seems like it's always him, is Michael Bloomberg. You know, and here's my other thing. If, if they want to get rid of guns, they want to ban guns and all that, why don't people like Bloomberg and all these Hollywood celebrities and, and politicians that are calling for bans on guns and, and restrictions on guns, I personally, I want their armed guards removed. I want their guards disarmed as well. If they're going to disarm me, they have to be disarmed as well. Right up the food chain. All the way up. Starting from the ground level up. I don't care if you've got state police as bodyguards. I don't care if you have Secret Service. U.S. Marshals. Doesn't matter. If we have to be without guns, you have to be without guns. Plain and simple. Now, I'm going to throw in the video, and I'll give you my reactions to it. The shootings in Newtown, Connecticut this weekend rocked the country and put gun control law back on the table. Michael Bloomberg appeared on Meet the Press to talk tough about how to move forward, starting with changing the words we use. You keep saying control. I think that's a, a, a bad word. What about regulations? What really, Bloomberg? Let's, let's not say gun control. Let's say regulation. That's like the pot calling the kettle black. Sorry, you moron. The shootings in Newtown, Connecticut this weekend rocked the country and put gun control law back on the table. Michael Bloomberg appeared on Meet the Press to talk tough about how to move forward, starting with changing the words we use. 
You Sam? keep saying control. I think that's a, a, a bad word. What about regulations? What about sensible gun laws that limit what you can do, when you can do it, make it consistent with the Constitution, but also doesn't, don't jeopardize everybody? Let's make laws where we can tell people what they can do and where they can do it, and let's make it in compliance with the Constitution? Bloom turd, you're a freaking idiot. Obviously, if you have read the Second Amendment, it says the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. What part of shall not be infringed don't you idiots understand? The president, in my view, is the one who has to lead this. The president campaigned in 08 on an assault weapon ban. And he says that the president campaigned in 08 on assault weapons legislation. Here's a little interesting fact. There's no legal definition for an assault weapon, but there is a legal definition for an assault rifle. And it clearly states an assault rifle is a rifle capable of select fire. Again, it falls back to being select fire, meaning burst or fully automatic. More than one round per pull of the trigger. So again, bloom turd, you're trying to say assault weapons. You should really be saying assault rifles. There's quite a bit of difference. Assault weapons is where they look like military weapons cosmetically, but they don't have the exact same functions. You're a moron. If you're looking to, uh, to ban assault weapons, why not go with hunting rifles too? Because, hmm, last thing I knew, a lot of our snipers and sharpshooters, both in law enforcement and military, guess what? Their sniper rifles are modified versions of hunting rifles. <gasps> oh, another fail, you moron. And the only gun legislation that the president has signed since then, one is the right to carry a gun in national parks where our kids play. Why should we not be able to carry a gun in a national park where our children play? After all, it's not just a school where these freaking morons show up and start shooting people. Duh. And one is the right to carry guns on Amtrak. I assume that's to stop the rash of train robberies, which stopped back in the 1800s. Yes, Bloom Turd, we haven't had train robberies in well over a hundred years. But the simple fact of the matter remains that we have the right to defend ourselves no matter where we are at. Why don't you take a trip somewhere without your armed frickin' bodyguards covering your ass and your family all the time and see what it's like for the rest of America to do so? Oh, but I forgot. You're a born with a silver spoon stuck in your frickin' throat jackass commie who doesn't seem to understand it because you've been able to afford armed security your entire life that you're somehow better than we are. No, you're not. In fact, you're lower than whale shit. The president, I think, to stand up and lead and tell this country what we should do. You think it's time for the president to stand up and lead and show and or tell this country what we should do? He lied about Benghazi. Him and his little butt buddies, uh, Eric Holder and Janet Napolitano, all lied about Fast and Furious and the other gun walking schemes they've got. The man can't tell the truth if it smacked him upside the head. And you expect him to show us and lead us into what we should do. Bloom turd, that's like the blind following the stupid. It makes no sense. Again, epic failure on your part. Good luck to the gun lobbyist. Good luck to the Hollywood lawyer who tries to blunt the righteous anger of millions of parents by hiding behind twisted readings of our... Bill of Rights. And then this other moron who apparently was some kind of congressman or some four-term congressman tries to say good luck to the to the Hollywood lawyers and, and whatnot that try to twist the words in our Bill of Rights. How can you twist what was plainly written out for anybody to understand?
again, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Why don't we quit sending money to foreign countries and for stupid ass programs, let college kids pay for their own freaking education by working their asses off like the rest of society has to do, instead of you morons using our tax dollars to bail them out, we could take that money into putting retired law enforcement and military veterans into a position where they could protect our children and have a job. Brilliant idea, but I forgot. Most of you politicians are too busy talking out of your ass and looking for more votes. A conservative Republican who received the NRA's highest ratings over four terms in Congress. I'm a conservative Republican who, re who received the NRA's highest ratings for four terms in office. You want a cookie? Debate over guns is a powerful, symbolic struggle between individual rights and government control. And you know what? In the years after Waco and Ruby Ridge, the symbolism of that debate seemed even more powerful to me. But the symbols of that ideological struggle, they've been shattered by the harvest sown from violent, mind-numbing video games and gruesome Hollywood movies that dangerously desensitize those who struggle with mental health challenges. Okay, so now this jackass goes on to blame gruesome video games and Hollywood movies. Says it desensitizes those who are already mentally unstable. To a degree, I agree with him. To a degree, it is a form of programming. Indoctrination, if you must. Whatever you want to call it. But, the simple fact of the matter is, again, they are trying to deflect the blame from the criminal, and putting it onto something that had no involvement in what happened. He goes on and he talks about Ruby Ridge and Waco. Does this idiot realize that with Waco, if they had just let the sheriff go and serve the warrant, there would have been no deaths? The sheriff even told them that. Does he also realize that with Ruby Ridge, what they did was they murdered innocent people because of the fact that they wanted to homeschool their children and be left the hell alone to live their lives as they see fit? No. Again, you have another jackass politician who's trying to blow smoke up everybody's ass to try and get either one, more ratings, or another election. Just saying. Get your facts straight before you start spouting bullshit. And then add in military-styled weapons and high-capacity magazines to that equation, and tragedy can never be too far behind. Oh, yes. Can't forget. Got to add in military-styled weapons. This jackass obviously doesn't realize that 90% of us can go into our gun safes, bring out multiple firearms, that are just like what the military has. Military uses the Remington 700 basis for one of its sniper rifles. The Ruger Mini-14 shoots the exact same bullet using the exact same cartridge and basically the exact same magazine as an AR-15. And guess what? The Ruger Mini-14 is not a military weapon. But the Ruger Mini-14 is used by numerous militaries and law enforcements around the world. Little unknown fact for many of you. What does it matter what they look like? It's cosmetics. Oh, it looks like an AK-47, so it's dangerous. Oh, my God. Piss off. Seriously, get a grip. I know people that can do just as much damage with a single-shot bolt-action rifle. Granted, it may have a five-round internal magazine. It may have a removable magazine. But you can do just as much damage with a high-powered rifle as you can with a semi-automatic rifle. It doesn't matter. The guts of the machine are the same. It's just the carriage that makes it look different. And then add in military-styled weapons and high-capacity magazines to that equation, and tragedy can never be too far behind. 
Oh, we can't forget about the high capacity magazines too. Oh my God, heaven forbid. Like I said before, you can have four or three 10 round magazines and change them out just as quickly as you can one 30 round magazine and do the same amount of damage in the same amount of time. It's the intent of the individual behind the weapon. Why don't we spend more money on our health care services, especially our mental health care services, instead of trying to ban guns? Okay? Try, try doing like Portugal. Decriminalize drugs. Treat it as a, as, a, as a public health issue. That way we got less cops getting killed. We got less gunfights in the streets over drugs. If you want to shoot up meth or snort meth, whatever you do with it, snort coke, uh, your heroin, your opium... Your PCP, hey, you know what? Go for it. Because by the time you finally get your fix, enough of your fix, you're going to be dead. And we don't have to worry about anything except for burying your ass. And even then, I think the law should make it that, the, that your next of kin should have to take care of that. I mean, if we're going to break it down by semantics, that's how I feel. I've spent the past few days grasping for solutions and struggling for answers. Well, daring to question my own long-held belief on these subjects. Oh, and just to interrupt again, he goes on to saying about, you know, adding in the high-capacity magazines and, and the outcome is always tragic. What about the thousands of innocents that are killed in war? What about the, 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 the record number of innocents that have been killed because of our dear president's warrantless drone strikes on everybody and anybody? What about the fact that they're funneling money to Al-Qaeda to have them start a war in Syria? What about their actions? If they want to show us how we should act, maybe they should try leading from the front by example instead of leading from behind in a desk. More, polit more people have been killed by politicians with a pen than they have with a firearm. Just saying. My general feeling is that it's not a good time to come out and say something if you are, were not changed by the events that happened over the weekend. So um, my feeling is, is that it's, this isn't as one-sided as it looks. There's definitely, I mean, the NRA has been completely silent on Twitter. They refuse to come on any shows. Um, so obviously this is not like a debate that's completely over, but it's... And the NRA has been completely silent on Twitter. Me, 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 me. Of course. How could you not be affected by what happened in Connecticut? How can you not be affected by what happened in Oregon? How can you not be affected by what happened in Colorado? Are we not human? Are we not capable of empathy for our fellow man? But again, as this nasally liberal doesn't seem to understand, just because the NRA is silent on Twitter and everything else doesn't mean that they don't care. They understand that it's not a time right now for them to start politicizing what is happening. I can guarantee you that the NRA is just as pissed as anybody else. And I'm sure that Wayne LaPierre and them are just as heartbroken as we are. I got small kids in my home. You know how shattered I'd be if my children were massacred in school? I don't think I'd be able to hold my composure as good as these people have been. I'd be going ape shit. I'd want answers. But again, it boils down to personal responsibility. It is our duty to protect ourselves and our family. And just like I saw on a, on a, a Facebook post that started a very big debate between a couple of my friends and some of their family members, Basically, it showed a picture of a 1911, a stainless steel 1911, and it says, if I can't trust a teacher with a gun, why should I trust them with my children? And I agree. Those schools are supposed to be safe places. Places for them to get an education. Not an indoctrination into Marxist-style communism. Not into what's right and what's wrong. I don't know. Maybe bring back the Bible and the ass whoopings like we used to get we might see things change in this country, but instead, no. We're being led, af led astray by godless idiots who have taken away our right of religion, our right to protest, and our freedoms of speech. 
They violated our Fourth Amendment rights with the NDAA. How can we expect them to bring us into an era of change, positive change, when they are doing everything to negate that change? Again, I leave that up, up, to, up to your opinion, your, your own vices and verses, and let you figure that one for yourself. I'm not saying everybody has to, has, has to believe in God. But don't you dare tell us that we can't pray, that we can't believe in God. If the school administrator wants to believe in God and say a morning prayer, what does it hurt you if you're an atheist? Does it, other than just hurting your feelings, does it really offend you? Is it hurting you in some fashion that it makes it impossible for you to live your life? No. You're being nothing but a bunch of snot-nosed, whiny-ass, pinko, commie liberals, and you've got to ruin everybody else's life because you're not freaking happy with yours. Let's continue to see what this little nasally witch has got to say. Today than we were on Friday morning, I think. Um, and especially when you look at what's, what else, like Obama said, has happened over his term. This is the fourth time that he's had to come to a community in comfort after a mass shooting. To begin with, assault weapons account for a pretty small fraction of the gun deaths that happen every day across the country. So the policy uh, solutions that are available aren't really solutions. I mean, I, studies were, have never really shown conclusively that when it was in effect for 10 years that the assault weapons ban really reduced gun murder. This last guy, Arthur Delaney, he's a smart man. Listen to what he says. There has been no proven statistics that show that the assault weapons ban had any change on anything. It did not have an effect on people being murdered. It didn't have an effect on the rampages. You know, and speaking of which, the word rampage, it, it brings me back to something that I saw on Netflix. There's actually a movie called Rampage, where this sick, twisted little shithead, obviously pissed off at life, can't get laid, can't get a girlfriend, he's mad at his mommy and daddy, probably needs to be on Prozac or some other stupid shit instead of just having his ass beat, decides to build himself up an arsenal, which at what appears to be under the age of 21 in this movie, he gets body armor and all this other shit and goes just hog wild through the town shooting everybody and anybody just because he wanted to. But I'm willing to bet in that movie that that whole town was a gun-free zone. Just saying. It, it's it, it's got to change on, on our behalf. Not the legislatures. Not the congressmen's. Not the president. Because we all know that he's a spineless, yellow belly bastard. He's not a leader. He's just an appointed, I'm sorry, a selected moron. He shows no guts as a leader. Don't get me wrong. I didn't like Bush either. Bush was a putz. So wasn't Clinton. Reagan? He was pretty damn good up until the point they shot him. Then when he survived, he changed his tune on everything. Doesn't the power reside within us on how we want our country run? Aren't we the ones that are the keepers of that power and not the governments? Because I think I remember something in the Constitution saying that the power is not granted to the government, the federal government, remain in the hands of the state, and those powers not given to the state remain in the hands of the people. So if that's the case, we all need to get off our dead asses and take our power back. We need to start demanding that they listen to us and do as we tell them. No more bullshit bills with little amendments put in there so they can get their, their little pork belly spending money put in because they couldn't get it passed on its own. Washington, D.C. and almost every state capital is full of treacherous bastards. Only there for one purpose. To further their own agendas. If you have a statesman 
for an elected representative who abides by the law and does as his elected or as, as his electors tell him to do like in my area we have a really good one Matt Gobbler he's a damn good statesman he really is he's not a politician there's a difference a politician is only out there for himself a statesman on the other hand is there for the people and so far I gotta tell you I've been highly impressed with Matt Gobbler very highly impressed he takes the time to listen to you he takes the time to respond unlike my congressman Glenn Thompson I've called I've emailed I've sent letters faxes we'll look into it we'll call you back please if you're gonna jerk me off at least buy me a freaking drink first I don't like being bullshitted none of us do I'd rather have you tell me, nah, piss off, we're not going to look into it. It's not worth our time. I'd rather have you tell me that than blow smoke up my ass and not contact me back. But see, that's where I become a pain in the ass to them. Because I keep calling, I keep faxing, emailing, writing, until I finally get my response back. How many of you actually do that? I'm willing to bet that I could pick ten of you out in a broad stroke. Maybe one of you will. Or does, I should say. And it kind of reminds me of the Rage Against the Machine song. It's time to take the power back.